I think it's an absolutely natural progression from that. I mean, if you look, Kobani, we, it was, uh, I believe, October the 4th was around when we were saying that it was about to fall, highly likely it was going to fall. There was a big momentum behind it from the IS surge. That has come into a stalemate now, and as we know, there's been winds with the Kurdish uh, retaking a significant hill. At the same point, we now have the U.S. dropping weapons in there. They almost had to respond in a way with a propaganda piece like this in order to re-establish themselves and show how effective they are. And what they did and what John Cantley said in there that was very interesting is the idea of inter integrating doubt by saying, for example, that the Western reporters weren't anywhere to be seen, trying to, trying to uh, make it look as though the reports coming out of the Western media aren't quite as accurate as the ones on the ground that they're reporting. But does this and that's play up very to traditional propaganda. Does this influence Western youth, like disenfranchised youth or, or loners looking for a cause, Neil? Um, I don't know if this piece would as effectively as some of their other pieces. I mean, as we know, one thing that IS have done unbelievably well is they've manipulated the messenger to suit their target audience. And that is one of the ways in which these kind of things resonate. So when they're looking at recruiting foreign fighters, disenfranchised youth, a lot of their pieces put front and center these young individuals. If they're looking at recruiting females, and I know that's been a lot of the talk recently, mm -hmm. in the propaganda pieces they're putting females front and center. They're very, very good at changing the nature of the communicator in order to increase the impact that it has on the kind of person that they're trying to communicate directly with. Okay, Colonel Reese, you know, John Cantley, as I said in an introduction to you, he has said in, in his initial video that he was coerced. And now, you know, ISIS is using him, who is, he's a hostage now. Uh, he's been there for two years. He was captured in 2012, portraying a news reporter. So do you think that he is still, obviously he's being coerced here, but Stockholm Syndrome, would that play into this at all? Yeah, Don, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm a, retire, I'm a retired Delta Force operator, and one of our major missions was hostage rescue. And due to the years, we conducted hostage rescues in Iraq, several 